Hello, Professor Toybox here along with Jasmine, and we're back in my Agrabah toy box. Last time I showed you how to create an economy system using the money manager, the inventory manager, and the storefront. And I'm using that in order to be able to bribe the guard here to get the key to the palace dungeon. If you missed that video, you should probably go back and watch that one before viewing this one, because I'm going to build on what we did last time. Today I want to show you how to provide the money for your economy system. How does the player get the money that they need? Well, there are two creativa toys that allow you to add money to your toy box. The Loot Drop Manager and Treasure Chess. And we'll start with the Loot Drop Manager. I'm going to drop one right here. This lets you determine what kind of loot is left behind when an enemy is defeated. And by default, enemies leave behind blue and orange sparks, and occasionally green and purple sparks but they don't have to drop sparks. You can make them drop other things. So as we open the logic menu for this toy, we're going to come down into properties, and there's one property. It's called auto collect. And so you can automatically collect whatever it is that the player or the enemy drops, whether that's sparks or whatever you specify. And I'm going to leave that turned off because I kind of like having the coin sitting out there and being able to pick it up. And go back and then there's another option here called edit loot pools and if we select that we can set up to five different loot pools and a loot pool is basically just uh, which enemies will drop what items and so as we select the first one here we now have two options the enemies and the loot so these are the enemies that would be dropping the loot that we configure so I'll select enemies and the plus sign. And we're going to scroll down and look for the Agrabah guard, because that's the only enemy in this toy box. And unfortunately, these aren't really organized the same as the uh, enemy wave generator, so it's a little harder to find. But I could add multiple enemies here, and each of these types of enemies that I add would use the same loot pool but I don't need those, so I'll go ahead and remove those guys. The only one I need is this one. And then we'll press B on my Wii U to go back. So now we have the enemy specified. Now we want to tell him what kind of loot to drop. And once again, I'll press the plus sign. And the very first item here, after the none, is economy. And you'll notice there's the little coin that we're using. There's a little coin with a Mickey face on it and a flower and there's a icon underneath that with the piggy bank and that's the same icon that's on the money manager and so that's telling you that whatever you set up under the money manager is what uh, this particular item would drop. You can also drop a few uh, packs and tools. You can have defeating an enemy drop another enemy although there's only three choices there for that and then uh, a few collectibles and then a lot of sidekick gear. Basically the same things that you can put in a treasure chest. And so I'm going to select the economy. And just to demonstrate, I'll also drop uh, the Pixar ball. So now we have two possibilities. An enemy, when it's defeated, is only going to drop one item. And so by specifying two items, we're giving the game a choice of what to drop. And... Uh, you can tell it uh, how much of one you'd rather see than the other by the set weight option, which you see at the bottom of the screen there on the little menu. And so I'm going to select A for this one. And weight, you can kind of think of it like a percentage, although it's really not. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe, but it's the chance that the enemy will drop this item. And so if I set this one, leave this one set to 100, and we come over to this one, and I set this one down to 50, for example. Like that. What this would mean is <clears throat> we now have a uh, 2 to 1 chance. So it's twice as likely that they'll drop this versus that. And that's really what the weight means. And since I don't really need the Pixar ball, I'll go ahead and delete that. And so this one is the only item, the weight 
doesn't really matter uh, because it's the only item. So I'll just leave it set at 100. And so what I've done now is set up a loot pool where the Agrabah guard will drop that kind of loot and it'll always drop that. And again, you can set up multiple loot pools for different kinds of enemies. You can have weaker enemies drop one thing and stronger enemies drop another. So that's pretty good. Now, this toy, just like these three, is deactivated by default when you drop it in the toy box. So it's not going to do anything until you activate it with a logic connection. So just like before, I'm going to come over to uh, the level starter, actually. And we'll do a new logic connection on Catalyze. And we'll activate it. And I've already got this button hooked up to the level starter, so I can activate that manually. And then we also need a way to deactivate that. And so on our deactivate button, I'm going to do a new logic connection when pressed. And we'll do a deactivate. And so now the loot drop manager is ready to go. And because as soon as I activate this, this will also activate the inventory manager. I'm going to go ahead and drop a few guards out here. So I'll come up to the enemy's drawer. And we'll put a few Agrabah guards out here. Just so I can test with them. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here. And we'll go ahead and activate the economy system and test it out. And now the economy system is on. Sparks have been replaced in the upper left corner with the coins. And now the loot drop manager should be active as well. And don't come back. And there he is. He's dropped a coin. And now we have one coin in our inventory. And there's another one. Now we got two coins. So you can see that's how you can get coins now from enemies. So let's go ahead and turn off the economy system so we can get back into our toy box editor. So that's the first way you can get coins. The second way is with a treasure chest. And that's right next door. And you can use this loot chest, or you can use the more decorative versions that are down in the gameplay toys drawer. We have this Dunbrock version, and we have the Kiln version, and I'm going to use the Dunbrock one. And so I'll set this out here just uh, temporarily, and drop that. And if we come into the properties for this, we can come down to configure the loot. Well, let's do properties first. So we have the same auto collect that's on the loot drop manager. And again, I kind of don't like that. I like seeing the coin hovering there and have to physically pick it up. And of course you can have it auto reset and do as much of that. I don't really want to do that in this case. And under configure loot, we have the same menu that we had for the loot drop manager. And so again, I'll select economy. And again, you have the option to set weight, so you can have several possible items that this chest could spawn. Uh, right now, I'm going to leave this set at 100, and this will be the only thing that this chest will give us. And that's all you need to do with that. But once again, in order to use it, the economy system has to be active. Otherwise, you open the chest and nothing will come out. So we'll turn on the economy system. And now the sparks are gone and we have our three coins. So now we can come over to the chest. Open the chest up. And there's our coin. So that worked out pretty good. So let's go ahead and turn that back off. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that chest. And we'll put a few others scattered around the toy box. And you would configure each of these the exact same way. And I had tucked one over here underneath this tree that you probably saw in the playthrough video. And I think that's kind of neat to hide it down there. And then in my toy box, I also hid one up here on top of the palace. And that gave us a, kind of a reason for the player to climb up here 
and explore. So we'll put one there. And you got to be careful not to put too many of these in the toy box because uh, they take up a bit of memory. And I'm going to need some for the uh, side quests. But I had put one out here on this rooftop. And I'd stuck another one out over here. These are the locations where I put chests in my toy box. But of course, if you're building this on your own console or PC, you can hide these chests anywhere you like. I put one over here on the ground, tucked in this little corner. I stuck one in Aladdin's loft, which kind of gives you a reason to come up here. And I had put one out over top of the marketplace out here. And I think that's sufficient. You could hide a few others. Actually, there is one other one I had placed. And I tucked it back here in the back corner of this market, which I thought was kind of a devious spot to put it. And it tucks it there out of the way a little bit. So I like that. One other thing I can show you is you can interact with the chest directly and you can also use the chest to provide a coin as a reward for some other action like tossing a sidekick into a sidekick door or completing a side quest and so if we attach a locator to the chest and put it up on top of there We can do a locator connection, spawn location, and then we'll go ahead and configure the loot and add the economy. And then on the sidekick well, let's see under properties, I do not want to disable the townsperson on entry and I want to test this right now just to show you so I'm going to turn that off temporarily. Detection level would be for the benefit of the sidekicks. Normal response chance will be 100%. Explosive is zero. And we can do a new logic connection on the well so that when the normal response is returned we can come over to our chest and spawn the loot. And then we can go ahead and hide the chest below the terrain. And now, in order to test that, let's come back over here and turn on the economy system. And we're going to need a sidekick. So we'll come over to our sidekick's drawer. Oh. <laughs> and unfortunately, re reset my sidekick drawer. And yeah, we'll use... Uh, we'll use Chip. And I'm going to exit out of that. And just to get over there quicker... We're in spark mode. And I'll zip over here. Here we go, and now we can toss him in the well. <laughs> and that produced the coin. So you can use the treasure chests in other ways besides opening them directly. You can use them programmatically to provide coins in other cases when you want them. So that's how the player can get the coins to spend in your economy system. Next time I'll build the first of three side quests and show you how to use the chest to award a coin to the player when they complete the quest. In the meantime, I hope these two videos on the economy system have been helpful to you. If so, please give them each a like and leave a comment to let me know. And don't forget to sign up on my blog or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that and you love Disney Infinity. That's all for me today. Take care.